Hey guys, welcome back to the mind of Brandon, and welcome back to another sexy Saturday. As indicated by the title of this video, Bill Nye is right about the sex spectrum. So I was inspired to make this video in lieu of the barrage of videos recently uploaded to YouTube by all sorts of people who are calling out Bill Nye for some stuff that he talked about in an episode of his new show, Bill Nye Saves the World. The episode in question is, of course, the episode titled The Sexual Spectrum. It was in this new Netflix show where Bill Nye appears to have gone full retard. Bill Nye, the not-so-scientist guy. This episode is very clearly politically driven and has very little basis in science. Dude, do you have any idea how reputationally damning this is scientifically, intellectually, what you're doing? This episode completely changed my perspective on Bill Nye. Not only as a public figure for science, but as a person. Because the people that you are dancing with are making our civilized Western culture more and more degenerate every day. And you were like an example for truth, for science. And by doing this, you've kind of spit on the face of, of not just people like me, but of other real academics and scientists. I mean, dude, name the smartest people in the world. They all think this gender fluidity shit is bullshit. I love science and I love the scientific method, but I, what I can't stand are the pseudo intellectual pro science fanboys who do not conduct experiments for themselves who aren't actual intellectuals in anything, but just blindly trust whatever the guy with the degree or the lab coat says. If he has a degree, if he has a lab coat, it must be true. Even if the studies are coming out of these debt factories called colleges and universities. You know, these debt factories that seem to attract SJW maniacs. You know, SJW maniacs with the same twisted worldview that Bill Nye is now pushing in his new Netflix show, Bill Nye Saves the World from a Reason, Bill Nye Saves the World from Science, Bill Nye Saves the World from Empiricism, Bill Nye Saves the World from Logic, Bill Nye Saves the World from Scientific Consensus, is what it should be called. But then he was like, oh, biological sex is on a spectrum. I'm like, Bill! It's not! He says sex is on a spectrum. Okay, so keep that in mind. One quarter of 1% of people don't fit biological norms. This is not hard evidence. This is just a bunch of speculation. You know, it, it's it's to the point where you, you can just start having people just say fucking whatever they want. Like, I'm this, I'm that. Like, say, at a certain point, people that are calling themselves attack helicopters are would gain some validity because this is what they feel like, you know? They, they, they don't feel like a man or a woman. And they feel like a machine or something and maybe and maybe some of the little metals maybe the iron in their blood is is enough evidence to suggest that yeah they are somewhat metallic but it's just really sad to see somebody like him someone that would normally champion science just kind of like regressing a little bit he, he may say pr progressing because in their minds they are progressing there's like oh we're being more open to all these different aspects and stuff but kind of ignoring the hard science about just chromosomes you know this xx and xy yeah dude because because progress totally looks like a bunch of gender-confused fags running around thinking if you wear a $12.99 Party City wig, you're now a woman. Demanding we all use Z and Zer pronouns, girls shaving their heads and dyeing their armpit hair, and everyone running around thinking they're a genderqueer toucan. Man, those darn conservatives are just so against progress. No, we're against degenerates. So if you want to be a degenerate and ride the coattails of Amy Schumer, go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you. But Bill, not you. You are... Just because what they're doing is supposedly on your side of the political spectrum doesn't mean it's right. Because Bill Nye, the science guy, you're, you're, you are a representative of science. And you just shit over all of it. I'm just sick of this overly gay, overly pro-trans narrative being pushed everywhere. Everywhere that toes the line with the liberal SJW PC crowd. It's gotten beyond annoying and is verging into unsettling and disturbing places. You know, it's really a shame that Bill Nye helped to shape so many childhoods, and now he's become nothing more than a pawn to the left. Bill! What are you doing? Well, I think it's safe to say that Bill Nye has successfully triggered some of the Trump supporters, as well as other people of the anti-SJW community. That being said, I want to clarify that I do not self-identify as an SJW. 
but I also do not self-identify as an anti-SJW, just as I don't identify as Democrat or Republican, liberal or conservative, feminist or anti-feminist. Yeah, I generally tend to avoid appropriating ideological labels altogether, as they, of course, tend to be subject to interpretation and really seem to do more to kind of pit us against each other rather than to bring any peace to the world. And on top of that, you know, they really just kind of make us more prone to bias and intellectual dishonesty and cognitive dissonance. But suffice it to say, there are all sorts of people who are attacking Bill Nye's credibility. Oh, he's not a real scientist. Bill Nye, the not-so-science guy. There's no science in this episode, no evidence to substantiate his position. He's just trying to further some kind of political agenda. <laughs> some of these people are stooping to personal attacks, character assassination, name-calling. Bill Nye's an idiot. Bill Nye's retarded. Bill Nye has gone full SJW. Really, guys? As Cult of Dusty has pointed out, some of these people are even going as far as to lie and misrepresent his position. So I decided to go watch one of the most popular videos made this week about Bill Nye. This video was made by Steven Crowder to see if I should start hitting Bill Nye like everybody else does. Let's find out together, shall we? Now we're going to be talking about gender today because he was, he was, he's making the case that gender exists on a spectrum. By the way, very different if you go back to his old show, he did say that chromosomes determine gender. If you go back to the episodes when we were a kid. Uh, so he's done a 180 on that. Amazing how 2017 just changes science. Yeah. Yeah. Completely <laughs> changes science. All right, so right off the bat, Steven Crowder is lying. This was actually something that was busted by Snopes.com. This is a meme that was spread around by all writers and the right wing. Basically trying to discredit Bill Nye for a show. They're all pissed off at a show now. So they behave exactly like the social justice warriors they claim to hate. They make up arguments against him to try to discredit him. And hundreds of thousands of people spread this fake meme that back in the day on his kid's show, he said that chromosomes were responsible for your gender. Which he did. He said chromosomes are responsible for your sex. And in the modern context that Bill Nye is using the words sex and gender, they do not mean the same things. That's what we find here with Steven Crowder. He is simply lying to try to make Bill Nye look as bad as he possibly can so that he can build this case of outrage against Bill Nye. And you people will leave this video fucking hating Bill Nye's guts and loving Steven Crowder because he gave you Bill Nye to hate. And the shitty part is, it's gonna fucking work. So I went ahead and hopped on Netflix and went looking for this show, Bill Nye Saves the World, which you know, I didn't even know this show existed prior to all this controversy here on YouTube. Uh, but I tracked down this episode on the sexual spectrum, started watching it, and I noticed that pretty much immediately, like basically as soon as the episode starts, Bill Nye is already talking about some of the actual evidence that substantiates his position that not everyone falls into these categories of, you know, the XY chromosome male, XX chromosome female. There are other possibilities. These are human chromosomes. They contain all the genes you need to make a person. This one is called an X chromosome, and that one down there, wait, wait. <laughs> that's a Y chromosome. They're sex chromosomes. Females usually have two Xs, and males generally have an X and a Y. But it turns out about one in every 400 pregnancies has a different number of sex chromosomes. Some people only have one sex chromosome. Some people have three, four, or even five sex chromosomes. For me, sometimes I feel I have a lot. So to the individuals who are saying there's no evidence to substantiate Bill Nye's position, there's no science in this episode, well, it turns out that's not quite right. Uh, it's possible that you might be suffering from cognitive dissonance and so you're just kind of uh, uh, brushing off the evidence that's being presented acting like it doesn't matter uh, because it disagrees with what you already believe what you've already been taught uh, it's also possible that uh, these individuals here on YouTube who are calling out Bill Nye are just kind of butt hurt that he's gone public with some stuff that uh, disagrees with what they've been preaching on their YouTube channels. To the people who are saying Bill Nye is not a real scientist, I've heard other scientists call Bill Nye a scientist. You'll see him hanging out with people like Lawrence Krauss, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Richard Dawkins, Brian Greene. I, he seems to have been accepted into the fold. I've never heard a scientist call out Bill Nye, oh, he's not a real scientist, he's just some schmuck with a TV show. No. 
He's been accepted into the fold. He is understood as a scientist by the science community. Don't get me wrong, we don't want to make an appeal to authority. We want to go off of the actual evidence that is actually available to us. That means factoring in this stuff about the number of chromosomes. While it is normal for people to have two chromosomes, every once in a rare while someone has only one, sometimes there will be three, four, or five. We have to factor that evidence in. These abnormalities cause learning disabilities, infertility, and small testicles. Like what you have, Bill, for cucking to the left. If chromosomes weren't needed for defining gender, then how come these abnormalities cause all kinds of sexual issues? And even with these chromosome abnormalities, people are still male or female as they still have female or male sex organs. A defect of chromosomes is nothing more than an abnormality that causes issues. It is not proof that someone is other than male or female because they still have either female or male sex organs, they just have an unfortunate syndrome. Cases of defective chromosomes do not change the fact that chromosomes usually define gender any more than saying conditions that cause low amounts of white blood cells prove our bodies don't need the average amount of white blood cells. A defect. Something that causes people pain and problems does not prove your point. Hunter, these are great points, but I think you might be misunderstanding Bill Nye's point. It is not the point that there are 72 different biological sexes or something like that. The point is that not everyone fits into these two categories of either male or female. Now, Bill Nye, of course, pointed out that it's not even necessarily clear what it is that makes someone what we consider to be male or female. Uh, you seem to be going off of the genitalia, and that's totally understandable. Before anyone had ever heard of chromosomes, before we even knew what that was, uh, people were going off of the genitalia. That's how we would distinguish male from female. For babies born with a penis, we'd say it's a boy, which of course is a gendered identity for a young person understood to be male. If they're born with a vagina, we say it's a girl, a gendered identity for someone understood to be female. Now, when those babies grow up, uh, they will probably go on to take other identities. Uh, the boy will probably uh, go on to identify as a man, and the girl in all probability will go on to identify as a woman. Probably. They might decide to take uh, unexpected identities. Uh, but the point here is that the one that's born with a penis we consider to be male, the one that's born with a vagina we consider to be female. But here's the thing. Even though the vast majority of the population will be born with either a penis or a vagina, every once in a rare while, someone will be born with both a penis and a vagina. Or maybe even a blend of the two, a, a penis vagina or vagina penis. Or they might be born with neither. They might have like a little pee hole there that could pass as a vagina at first glance, but closer inspection reveals no clitoris, no reproductive parts. They're incapable of reproduction. Okay. Now it's totally understandable if, if you look at this as, as defects. Okay, I, I get that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you shit for that. That's fine. But if we're going off of genitalia to determine whether they are male or female, and they come out with both a penis and a vagina, well then it appears that there's some kind of odd blend of male and female. It's not either or. Therefore, Bill Nye's point that not everyone falls into either male or female is an accurate point. If I recall correctly, the YouTube user Some Black Guy uh, was going off of the chromosomes. So he's of the attitude, well, you know, the way you tell male from female is the chromosomes. Males have XY chromosome, females have XX, right? Don't need to go off the genitalia. Pfft, nah, chromosomes. Here's the thing. While we expect someone that has XY chromosomes to be born with a penis, and we expect someone with XX chromosomes to be born with a vagina, that is not consistently always how it goes down. Every once in a rare while, someone born with a penis actually winds up with XX chromosomes. 
That's odd. We expect someone born with a penis to have XY chromosomes. Every once in a rare while, someone born with a vagina has XY chromosomes instead of the expected XX. What the hell is going on here? We expect someone that's born with a penis to have XY. We expect someone born with a vagina to have XX. So if it's chromosomes that determine whether we're male or female, that means that a male can be born with a vagina instead of a penis. Now, the only point I'm trying to make here is that Bill Nye's point that it's not necessarily clear what makes someone male or female is a valid point. Okay? Do we go off the genitalia or do we go off the chromosomes? Maybe we go off of something else. Now, different chromosomes have a tendency to produce different quantities of sex hormones. So if your XY chromosome, you're probably going to be producing higher levels of testosterone than someone with XX chromosomes. Whereas if you're someone with XX chromosomes, you're probably going to be producing higher levels of estrogen than someone with XY chromosomes. And uh, these, these sex hormones, they will uh, influence your genitalia, but they will also influence your brain. Uh, so, you know, in the field of neuroscience, there's actually a distinction that's being made between a male brain and a female brain. And these different kinds of brains result in different kinds of, you know, typical male behavior versus typical female behavior. Granted, some of that is kind of, you know, culturally imposed. It's just kind of learned. It's how we're indoctrinated. But some of it is innate. It's kind of based on how we're wired and our hormones, things of that nature. Suffice it to say, there's any number of abnormalities that can crop up in the technicalities uh, to result in conflicting signals being sent to different parts of your body so that you might wind up with genitalia that's more typically considered male while you wind up with a brain that's more typically considered female or vice versa. Like, uh, gender, sure, it's on a spectrum. You can you can feel like more of a guy, you can feel like more of a girl, you can feel like neither. Whatever, I get it. It's, a po it's totally possible that you don't fit into these, like, stereotypes of girl and guy. Totally understandable. But biological sex... That's like... Unless you're intersex, which is just a rare condition, there's... You can't, like, there's no other, like, sex. It's like male, female, intersex. There's no, like, there's not 72 biological sexes. It's just, and I still think gender has to do with the two sexes because all those genders still revolve around the two. Um, feeling like neither, neither, two. Feeling like both, both, two. Feeling demi-girl, girl. Feeling demi boy, boy. All of those genders still revolve around the two. So there's no, like, there's no, there, I, I don't get it. Actually, Shu, it sounds like you got a pretty good understanding of what's going on. Maybe, maybe the issue is that you're misunderstanding the position that's being put forward. Uh, when Bill Nye does his abacus demonstration, he, he's talking about the the biological sex spectrum uh, remember how you know on one end there was male on the other end there was female and then there were other possibilities between male and female not outside of it okay he's not he's not saying oh there's 72 different biological sexes that exist beyond male and female no they're not beyond male and female they're between male and female they're blends of the masculine and feminine traits, whether you're looking at genitalia, hormones, uh, you know, chromosomes, you know, brain chemistry, whatever, okay? And he talked about all that in the episode. So there's no, you don't need to, you know, fill in blanks or anything with like, you, you don't have to pretend there's some extra information out there that he didn't cover. He talked about this stuff. Granted, he didn't necessarily go into you know, some of the detail that I went into 
you know, really could have afforded to go into some more detail about some of this stuff. But uh, su suffice it to say, it, it seems that you have this expectation of, you know, what he's trying to get across, and it's not what he's actually trying to get across. It's not that there's a bunch of other sexes outside of male and female, it's that every now and then there are abnormalities or some kind of blend of the two. Now, what was, what was the point of all this? You know, a lot of people thought Bill Nye was just kind of furthering some sort of political agenda, but he doesn't really like ever propose any kind of like political action. You know, really it just seems to be trying to get people to uh, be more accepting of certain minority groups uh, rather than, you know, being bigoted toward them, calling them degenerates or something like that. In the words of general pediatrician Dr. Roy Benarock, we know that we're born with a biologic gender defined by what genitalia look like, but sometimes even very young children identify themselves as the opposite sex. These individuals are called transgender, and as a society, we're still figuring out how to fit these people into our ideas of what's normal and what's healthy. One thing we do know is that children who are transgender or who question their gender, or who have a minority sexual orientation, are very much at risk for bullying and social isolation, and have a high rate of suicide. And all of that is certainly unhealthy. No matter what your personal beliefs are, these kids need our respect, and our protection, and our love. You know what kind of scares me? and. Do you guys relate? I'm a liberal, you know this. So it kind of- I kind of almost feel like, am I gonna- is- Am I like the 40s equivalent of the guy going- like the- The 40s PSA of the guy like, Oh, those homosexuals! I just don't understand them! That's not scientifically right! Am I that right now? Like, it's kind- I'm actually- sometimes I second-guess myself and I'm like, What if I am that? right now? What if I'm like, oh, these genders, oh, they're just crazy. Does anyone else feel that way? Like, I'm, I'm almost worried that maybe it is a thing, and I'm like, Wah. 